tonight's program, we have uh, some a lot of news, actually, and some fungi in the news. And then we will be moving on to our ever enthusiastic and knowledgeable Annie Weissman. She's our outstanding program chair. She's going to be running the ID table tonight. Telling, about, telling us about some of the uh, many things that we discovered at Sequinota this past year. And then we're going to move on to uh, Daniel Teratut. And uh, he is going to be telling us something that I just learned about this past weekend. The, uh, and he's working on the um, spotted lantern, lanternfly, which is becoming quite a nuisance for those of us in Pennsylvania and the Mid-Atlantic. And uh, I saw it all over the place in Pittsburgh last night or last weekend whenever I was hanging out at the uh, Pittsburgh Club uh, foray, the link off foray with his um, advisor and uh, consigliere uh, uh, Barry Overton at uh, Lock Haven University. And then we're going to hear from my good friend. Amy Robleski. I've known Amy for a couple of years now. You know, it's funny on the uh, if you get into mushrooms, you just see and, and meet so many people on the mushroom trail at these different events. And uh, that's been the case with Amy. I just ran into her and all kinds of different uh, mushroom uh, weekend events all over the place. And uh, it's always nice. Always nice to see a friendly face. She's a uh, she's working on her dissertation at uh, Penn State University, which is just down the highway from me. I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has to say. Okay, man, oh, man, we got so much to share. Uh, so many activities coming up. And uh, I'm going to post links to all these in the chat soon enough. First one is the uh, this Driftwood Tavern event. I'm going to attend that this weekend. That's on Saturday. Now, Driftwood is in north central Pennsylvania, and I don't expect anybody else from uh, D.C. to show up there, but I currently live in central Pennsylvania, so that's not too bad for me. Uh, the Driftwood Tavern lives in what is known as the Pennsylvania Wilds. That's about five or six counties in north central Pennsylvania where basically nobody lives. Uh, Driftwood is a small town in the county of Cameron, Cameron County, which only has about 5,000 people in it and 80% forest. This used to be the best kept secret in all of Pennsylvania until uh, Governor N Ed Randell decided to start uh, promoting tourism for the wild elk herd that lives up there. Now, that wild elk herd is the, is the um, oldest elk population uh, east of the Mississippi River. And uh, I wrote an article in the um, in a uh, club newsletter about two years ago where I described the event and the history of that elk population, which which was uh, hunted and poached into extinction mm -hmm. in the 1800s and then um, and then brought back uh, about a century ago. Kind of fascinating stuff. Like I said, I'll post some I'll be posting all these links in the chat uh, as soon as I finish up talking. Then on this Sunday, we're going to have our next DNA sequencing lab day. And uh, while you're there, you can ask a fun gal. That's Sarah Nella Lanera is my Mike Amiga. And this will be at 10 a.m. to more or less 4 p.m. on Sunday at the Mount Rainier Nature Center. Uh, the DNA sequencing team gets together once a month. And we usually work up about 16 samples using uh, mini PCR DNA um, <clears throat> extraction and amplification. And uh, so if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this technology or maybe you have something that you want to um, ask us to sequence, uh, feel free to stop in. Uh, like I said, we'll be there all day on Sunday and uh, we love having visitors. So, uh, you know. Make a note of that if this stuff interests you. Next Saturday, I'm hoping that this is going to be the be beginning of a long-time collaboration with Clifton Institute in Virginia. We're going to be doing a mushroom walk. Several of my DCM uh, identifiers are going to join them over there. There'll be uh, 
We're going to do a uh, mushroom presentation. Uh, the registration for this event has already closed. It was run through the Cl Clifton Institute. But like I said, this is this is going to be a long-term collaboration. So there's going to be um, other events popping up over there. So uh, uh, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. And uh, keeping with the October theme, you can see I threw a Fomis Fomate, the uh, uh, Fomis up here. No, the witch's hat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm juggling all kinds of stuff on my screen at one time. Uh, Throw the witch's hat in there to honor month of Halloween. Oh, and that is a slide for Ask a Fun Girl. That's uh, again, that's Serenella Linares. And uh, if you come out for our DNA Lab Day on Sunday, uh, that is the uh, lady you can bring your mushroom questions to. Okay, so this is a big one. Listen up. Uh, next Sunday is going to be a major event at Brookside Gardens. This is our mushroom fair. Um, this is uh, this tends to get really popular, especially if we have nice weather that day. I don't know. I want to say we usually have a, uh, at least 500 people pop through there. And I don't know, I feel like some years we've had up to a thousand, although it's really difficult uh, to count the number of attendees. We will be open from uh, noon till about 5 p.m. And uh, we'll have walks on the hour. We should have plenty of fungi on the display tables. We have other displays set up. And uh, yeah, and every come on out and join a party. And you don't have to be a member of Moth. Just you can bring anybody along. Feel this is this is a promotional, educational, free event for the public, and it's at Brookside Gardens, which is just an absolutely lovely, lovely place. If you've never been there before, so even if you don't feel like looking at mushrooms all afternoon, you can go take a stroll around a beautiful botanical garden. This event is one that I started five or six years ago with my. Good, good lichen friend, uh, lichenologist friend, Dr. Natalie Howe. We will be going to Rock Creek Cemetery on the Sunday before Halloween and looking at the uh, lichens in the, uh, on the tombstones there. Now, Rock Creek Cemetery, if you've never been to before, is basically an open-air art museum. There are just famous works of art, uh, funerary arts there. Uh, and, of course, many famous um, uh, people who are interred there as well. So uh, this is probably the only time where you're ever going to go on a mushroom walk and hear more about art history or as much about art history as you're going to hear about uh, Kingdom Fungi. But we have a great time. And like I said, we've done this probably five or six times now. So I encourage you to come on out. There's something wrong with the event notice in and wild apricot, I can't fix it. No registration for this event. So if you want to come along and you see that it looks like you need to register, just ignore that. November 4th, I'm trying to do something. Uh, I'm trying to do some outreach with other clubs. And uh, so we're going to go to the Mount Alto uh, State Park. This is just on the other side of the border with Pennsylvania. And uh, this will be a joint foray with the Eastern PA Club and the Central PA Club. And uh, we're going to planning to have um, two presentations there. One of them will be on cult uh, cultivation. The other one will be TBD. And uh, and even though you, we say that that's located in Pennsylvania, it, as I said, it's just on the other side of the border. So it's an hour and a little bit of change to get there. So, yeah, it's a bit of a drive, but it's not not the worst. I've been stuck in D.C. traffic for more than an hour before. Well, more than an hour before. Then on November 5th, this is um, this is not a Ma D.C. sponsored event, but uh, Danny Bariso is, was a uh, former board member for Ma D.C. And he's going to be hosting a cultivation event at his um, at his place in Frederick. And uh, Danny's been doing home cultivation for many many years so uh if you're interested in this you'll you'll want to reach out to him and uh 
try to get signed up. There is a there's a limit to the number of registrations, and I'm unsure where he is on whether he was going to charge a fee or just charge people to uh, take the um, to take home a uh, shiitake log with them. But uh, anyhow, he'll he'll clarify all those things for you whenever you reach out to him. And then on November 7th, man, oh, man, I am really looking forward to this talk. Bill Yule is a mushroom encyclopedia. He goes by the handle of Belit Bill. And uh, so that is his uh, specialty, but he knows a ton about all things Kingdom Fungi. So that's going to be a really good one. <clears throat> and then, whoop, sorry, whoop. And then on November 15th, for all you shutterbugs out there, takes, you know, get some of those nice picks and uh, get them in by November 15th. That's the deadline for the photo contest. And this is a contest where everybody wins. Uh, and a play on that old line from uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm. Um, yeah, all votes are equal. Some votes are more equal than others. Well, all photos are equal in the contest, but some are more equal than others. And uh, I really look forward to seeing your great photographs. Then uh, after that, it's never too early. Start looking ahead to next year. So mark your calendars. Uh, Amy Robleski, you hear me? Mark your calendar. That's August 30th to September 2nd. That's when we'll be at Sequinota next year. Uh, we have, um, at, at the moment, we're going to have the... Uh, the Bissettes, Alan and Arlene Bissett as our guest mycologist. And uh, so that's that's all the more planning we've done yet, but you definitely want to want to uh, lock that weekend in so you can come join us in the Laurel Highlands of uh, southwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, and speaking of going to nice places, the Nymph Foray will be in Cape Cod next year. That's the Northeast Mycological Federation. So, uh, you know, if you've been looking for an excuse to go uh, rub shoulders with the Kennedys, I guess uh, October 11th through 14th is going to be your is going to be your best bet. And then, uh, if you want to go to the North American Mycological Association next year, uh, this is going to be your opportunity to head out to the state of Washington. And given that time of year. Probably going to have a good chance to sample some or some West Coast truffles and matsutake. Okay, for some fungi in the news, this was kind of a cool YouTube video. Um, this is one where uh, this lady went through this long instructional process to make paper mushroom. So I included it in here because I thought you just might want to pop that. Uh, Try to pop out a few of those for your Halloween decor. And this was a clever article that I saw in Norspore. I frequently buy, not frequently, I occasionally buy cultivation uh, supplies from Norspore. And the uh, and uh, they send me a ton of emails. The uh, and and a lot of them have good links to different different articles. This one was about. Uh, was kind of a clever article where they loosely tied together the summer blockbuster movies, Barbie and Oppenheimer. And they were talking about micro-remediation and also the, those fungi that they found in, that they found in Chernobyl that are, appear to be consuming some of the radiation. This is another, uh, interesting article that, uh, Located, it's the, uh, I forget who sent this to me, but the, uh, it discusses patulin, which is a uh, mycotoxin. It's apparently produced by several different fungi, and it's found on some of our most common foods. And uh, in a study that they've just done in Japan, they found another filamentous fungi in soil that looks like it breaks down patulin. So maybe hope that uh, we can fight fungi with fungi for, uh, to improve our food safety. And last slide, put this on here. As you might have noticed, the theme so far was uh, all about Halloween. I put this in here because Monday is Native People's Day. And uh, so 
this is a uh, this is a website that I follow pretty closely. Hunter Angler Gardener Cook. I happen to be all of those things. And in this article, Hank Shaw, the owner of that site, is talking about wheat lacoche, aka corn smut, and using it to make quesadillas, the Mexican toasted cheese sandwich. And you see a, a nice picture of that from uh, Hank's website on the right. And, uh, you know, that's uh, wheat lacoche hasn't been given much culinary currency here in the States, but that's going up now. In Mesoamerica, it's been a vital food stuff um, ever since pre-colonial times. I did a talk about this a couple years ago, several years ago, a lot of years ago, and uh, that's on our YouTube channel. And again, I'm going to, I'll post a bunch of this stuff in the chat once I uh, finish up with this portion. The other one down here, I added in because uh, Native People's Day, Takaho is the Algonquin word for this subterranean, this hypogeus fungi, and um, it's Wolfaporia extensa. It's a, uh, it's a sclerotia, which is basically akin to the potato. Uh, <laughs> it's basically a storage mechanism uh, for fungi, like a potato, or akin to a tuber. And uh, we've all seen Takaho as a place name around Maryland and Pennsylvania. And uh, this is one of the things that the indigenous people were talking about. <laughs> For under for a couple of different food um, foods, uh, this being one of them. And I also the first time I ran across this was actually reading a very old article by Mary Elizabeth Banning. She's Maryland's most famous mycologist, of course, present company notwithstanding. And that is everything that I have. So I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Annie.